cash value life insurance and the stock market, right? How are they related? Are they related? What if there's a market crash, right? Because people are always talking about this. And when there have been market crashes or when there's fear of one, we see a lot of people running to life insurance policies. So firstly, just the core fundamentals of a whole life insurance policy. You will assume it's designed properly, all that good stuff with one of the top companies, we're gonna see it produce somewhere in this neighborhood, four to 6%. And that is if the market is booming, and that is if there is a recession. So when it comes to the market, that has zero impact on returns of a whole life insurance policy. The stock market, and the relationship to life insurance is non-existent, right? So the main question should be, if I'm going to get four to 6%, even in a recession, right? So let's pull up some dividend history here. And right? if I wanna get four to 6%, I've got a guarantee of 4%, and then whatever the company pays in the dividend rate, right? Let's look at a period here. Interest rates have been low historically. Right, I've got my guarantee at four. 08 happened. Here's my dividend rates, right? Gradually dip, but still in a low interest rate environment, right? In 2015, where interest rates almost bottomed out, I can still get a 6% dividend rate. Some companies at 7% those years. Again, that's a gross rate, but it's attractive for an account with no risk. It's tax free if I do everything right. The question that we hear often is how, right? How are insurance companies driving these returns? Even if it nets out to 4% with no risk, right? Because they're not investing in the market. So the question really is where do insurance companies invest their money? So let's take a look. Historically, if we go back so when I was a little baby, or before I was born, <laughs> in the 80s, you see what here? Double digit dividend rates, right? What could we get a mortgage or a CD for back in this point in time? Much higher than what we see here, right? We see 11, 12, even 13 and a quarter percent at one time. What insurance companies would do back in this period of time, back in the 80s, is you'd see close to about 80% of their assets invested over here in bonds. Short-term bonds, 20, 30-year bonds, they just buy the things, hold on to them forever, made it very easy to credit a high return, easy to credit the guarantee, no issues whatsoever. They just buy bonds and hang on to the things. Can't do that anymore, right? Bonds, especially today, if we go back up to the top, don't even keep up with the guaranteed rate of 4%. So, what are insurance companies doing with their money to credit these dividends? So I'm still going to get a net return of four to six percent. That's safe, tax-free, liquid. All right, that's great. How? If I'm earning four to six percent, it means the insurance company is earning a lot more than that, right? So how they do it is, again, if you go back to the 80s, what do we see? 1980s, 80% 80 of their assets were possession, positioned in bonds. Those bonds come up for renewal, doesn't make sense to renew them. Now today, you see a lot of companies at 50%, even declining, if you look at their assets, in relationship to their bond allocation, right? What they are doing is saying, okay, we can't put our money in bonds because they don't pay anything. I've got to go somewhere else. So where can I go that's safe and not the stock market? That's still gonna pay me a competitive return. Can't be bonds either. Here's where they go. Two main areas have really helped here. One, but high end first because it is high end. We've got high end commercial real estate. 
Right, and when I say high-end commercial real estate, you're often talking metro city areas, right? Skyscrapers, the Macy's building in New York City, where there's heavy, heavy foot traffic, and the returns that those investment properties pay are way higher than four to six percent. Multi-family units, right? Those are going to pay attractive returns. You just need a lot of capital to acquire that. Who has a lot of capital? Insurance companies. That's what they're doing with their premiums. So that's one area. The second, and this one we've seen more and more, are in businesses, other companies. So we see these insurance companies often buy up other companies. Some, some examples, if you look at one of the bigger major mutual companies in Mass Mutual, this is more recent, in June of 2016, they purchased a division of MetLife. Right, their sales division, MetLife, got into some issues, so there was a great opportunity there. They bought a division. That helps increase the profits of Mass Mutual. They've purchased the Hartford 401ks 401k division before. They've purchased Oppenheimer Investments, and all companies do it, but they're buying other income producing assets that are not reliant on the stock market, is what they're after there. So, where can I go that's safe, that's still going to pay me a competitive return that's not bonds? That's where you see the high end commercial real estate and other companies that they're buying partially or fully, right? So if a market crash occurs, which always happens, life insurance policies, when those crashes have occurred, have produced between four to 6%. When the market's booming, like it has in recent years, you've got that same four to 6%. So if the market crashes, if I'm a life insurance policy, guess what? My money will be safe.